But after I went through the news and everything that they typed, then I'm asking myself, what's not the difference that you scrapped the law? I did not scrap it. To me, there is no really much difference. Keep watching. If you are from other countries, maybe you are a white or this thing. Uh -huh. That this thing can work for you. But if you are places like from Africa, especially Nigeria or anything, <laughs> I do not trust that rule. Anyways, you know that anytime um, any government or immigration, when they renews, release any news, when I comment to tell you guys, I just tell you guys the downside, what I think, what I hope, and everything. So, guys, we're going to be going through. Like, you know that feeling, that vibe, when you actually get um, good news and everything. So guys, as most of you know, or if you don't know, I'm actually telling you, um, Canada is one of those countries that actually like, like when everybody was actually on, like when everybody was not doing long term again, mm -hmm, let me use that word, Canada was still on long term. So Canada is actually one of those countries that didn't recover early from the lockdown this and every one of that so you know so many countries in be like united kingdom when you actually want to travel like in fact if you can have actually even scrapped their um covid whatever once you are fully vaccinated you can actually travel whereas countries like um canada they actually still have active covid requirements and all of that and it's not just canada we have so many countries in the world that are actively that are still in on in in lockdown and that's why i used to tell you before you book your flights make sure to verify the latest information about the country you're going and aside the country you're going the country that you are going to be having a transit like i made a video earlier i don't know i'm posting this video okay i posted the video already like telling people that actually booking flights from nigeria or anything like most times like especially if you are going to a country that is actually far there's no you actually have stopover and depending on the flight you're going with this is the way depending on the international flight you're going with you have stopover in their country or another country or anything so make sure you check their covid requirement because sometimes you'll never see anything you know you book the flight and everything when you not get to their stopover when you're supposed to when you not get to when you are supposed to board for your next flight that's when they're not commenting about covid requirements and they say and then it might be like if they're ever nice to you they can subject you to for this 14 days quarantine and of course money from your pocket or they'll tell you to pay um, money like twenty thousand, sorry, two thousand pounds or two thousand dollars, depending on how which mood that they are. So your best bet is to always verify issues before you travel. I hope you know that. So guys, it's actually like a new latest good news about Canada. Like Canada is opening up a bit. Like this one is one of those juicy. This thing when I just got the news, like that was like, mm -hmm, wow. So, this news was actually released 17th of March 2022, but it's going to take effect from 1st of April 2022. So, if you know you actually want to book your flight by February, yeah, by March, before if you want to book your flight before before April 1st 2022, just you start with and everything. But you guys know, I'm telling you that. This rule will actually take effect from 1st of April 2022. But after I went through the news and everything that they typed, then I'm asking myself, what's not the difference that you scrapped the law? I did not scrap it. To me, there is no really much difference. Keep watching. If you are from other countries, maybe you are a white or this thing. Uh -huh. that, this thing can work for you. But if you are places like from Africa, especially Nigeria or anything, <laughs> I do not trust that rule. Anyways, you know that anytime um, any government or immigration, when they renews, release any news, when I comment to tell you guys, I'll just tell you guys the downside, what I think, what I hope and everything. So guys, we're going to be going through the instruction, everything they said on their page, the, um, this thing to get, and then I'm going to be telling you the downside that I think, because after I went through it, I had to read it how many times, I was like, so what's that the essence of it saying, uh, okay, fully vaccinated patient, when was, okay. So now this rule, they said, is for fully vaccinated patients. Whether you are entering Canada by land, by air, by sky, by flying, by air, by water, anywhere, as long as you are entering Canada. And this one works for entry Canada and exiting Canada, returning to Canada. Anyone, as Canada is in your plan, 
so we're actually going to be going through together so guys if you've enjoyed what we've had so far if you like what you've enjoyed so far what are you waiting for click that subscribe button the notification bell so that when i post a new video you'll be like one of the first games to buy and thumb up my video so that the way of telling youtube that i am making a very nice video a very nice content and and nothing so guys let's dive right into it hey i'd not with you guys hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel um this is your own girl i should tell me so of course you're watching i'm bigger than that i don't need to introduce myself if you don't know me i'll show, show as a woman if you don't know me you don't know me near. so now let's start um together so travel to canada requirement for vaccinated travelers like i told you this one is for vaccinated travelers they are for unvaccinated travelers why is one for vaccinated traveler so instead of me splitting the video when i went through the requirement then i was like so now what's the difference between vaccinated traveler and unvaccinated traveler it does not make any difference to me because so whether you are vaccinated or you are not vaccinated keep watching then you watch you say that what's the difference because keep watching so they said this is actually starting first of april 2022 and then so what they said is if you're actually vaccinated they will not require you to have the pre-entry test into canada you know before now they used to request for pre-entry test but now they will no longer require it you guys be listening no you'll be listening you will see oh, uh -huh, for fully vaccinated entry canada but anytime from now till april till march 31st of march 2022 you still follow the normal rule of pre-entry test and vaccination and isolation and everything but from first of 22 first of march first of april 2022 that is when this will follow but i told you there's no difference to me okay so now what are the main points so they said travelers are eligible to enter or return to canada if they are fully if they qualify as fully vaccinated um, traveler so the question now is how do you know you're a fully vaccinated traveler because it's not all fully vaccinated traveler that is vaccinated traveler or it's not a fully vaccinated traveler that is fully vaccinated travelers according to canada immigration so there are some requirements so if you feel like you're actually fully vaccinated come forward then we're going to be saying some requirement then you now see if it applies to you then if it applies to you even with your full vaccine there is okay you are fully vaccinated but if you have some missing points but to you you feel like you have you can be fully vaccinated in nigeria but to canada you're not fully vaccinated you can be fully vaccinated in ghana but to canada you are not fully vaccinated to them so even they are fully vaccination it has requirements it has specialty it has that's what i'm telling you guys so on this page so now we'll be talking about to check if you're actually fully vaccinated or if you're a fully vaccinated traveler then checklist of what to have when you're ready to board the pre-entry test and then um whether you're vaccinated or not you are supposed to upload your results or your vaccine card to an arrival sorry arrive can account so we'll be doing that together how to set up the account how to upload your documents and everything that's why this game is your first plug make sure you click the subscribe button so now to check if you qualify as a fully vaccinated traveler so to check if you qualify, is it that I keep shifting this head? Because after going through this thing, you guys will see this is, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. There's no difference between let's see, sure. To qualify as a fully vaccinated traveler to Canada, you must have you must have received at least two doses of vaccine accepted for travel. You guys know that for COVID vaccination is always two doses. The first jab, the second jab, the first jab, um, then the first, second jab, you take it like one month or three weeks after, depending on the type you're taking. Mm -hmm. So that means for you to say you're a fully vaccinated traveler, you have to have taken at least two doses of vaccine. And it's not just any vaccine. No. You know, we have some countries that just say this is COVID vaccine. Not just any vaccine. It has to be a vaccine approved by the Canada Immigration. So you understand me? It's not by just any vaccine. It has to be in the list of approved vaccine. Either you've taken a or two doses of vaccine accepted for travel or a mix of two accepted vaccines. That means Canada Immigration actually have list of accepted vaccines 
You understand? So either you take one type of vaccine, you take the two dose, or maybe you mix it. Let's say Canada has um a COVID vaccine A B C D to Z, right? So they are telling you that either you take two doses of A of letter A, or you take two doses of letter B, or you take two doses of either letter A or letter B, or you take the two doses of either letter A or letter X. Just make sure that it's two two zone two two dose. So wherever which one you're combining, it, but I don't know, depending if it's not a reaction your body. That's why when you take your first dose and you're taking it from a place that it was not where you take it, make sure to inform them because if you can take another one and let her A and C are enemies from with you and they are fighting together inside your body, my dear. Anyways, let's continue. So you would have taken two doses of either one of these things. And then there's another special type of COVID vaccine. It is called the Jensen or Johnson slash Johnson vaccine. I'll be typing it on the screen. Jensen or Johnson slash Johnson vaccine. So this one, it doesn't require a two dose, it's just one dose. So if you don't have taken Jensen, Johnson slash Johnson, it's just one dose of that one that you need. Whereas other type of COVID vaccine you need to take to those. Now let's keep moving. So the next requirement to know to show that you are actually a fully vaccinated traveler is that you have received your second dose at least 14 calendar days before you enter Canada. 14 at least. That means 14 days should be your minimum. Not like you want to travel tomorrow now. You can't take your second job three days before you cannot enter Canada you are not fully vaccinated so 14 days should be the last day that means from 14 days and above so let's say I want to travel September um, 15 if, I, if I'm planning to travel September 15 I can take my COVID from March April May June July August till September 1st if I take my second job September 2nd that means I am not fully vaccinated. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So your second job must be at least, at least 14 days before you travel. So if you're planning of traveling September 15, make sure that you take your COVID test from September 1st downwards. It could be August, it could be July, it could be June, it could be... Mm -hmm. So the next requirement to show you are fully vaccinated is you have no signs or symptoms of COVID. Not like you claim you are vaccinated and then you'll be coughing inside the plane or you'll be running temperature. Like I told you, this vaccine, taking this vaccine does not exempt you from having risks of contracting this COVID. It just helps to minimize or reduce the effect or the symptoms, yeah, or the severe effect. It's just to be so you being vaccinated or not does not mean you not catch COVID, eh? You are still able to catch it. You got me, mm -hmm. but it will just help you to reduce the symptoms. Mm -hmm. So, next one on our list. So, after you have already know the conditions to actually satisfy that you're a fully vaccinated um traveler, yeah, you're fully vaccinated. You take two doses of your two doses of um the certified vaccine, or you take one those of the Jensen and Johnson, you have no COVID symptoms and then your second job is at least before um, 14 days before your travel. I hope you, we are all clear with that one. Then the next one is after you've had all these um, requirements, you have to upload your proof of vaccination in Arrive Can. You can download it as an app, you can go on their website, but I'll we'll be showing you guys. But before then, let's just talk about the theory part. So uh, um, your proof of everything. So. In uploading your approval, before that, you have to complete your that's another one. Complete your alive can submission and have alive can receipts. If you have, mm -hmm. you have to complete your alive can submission, just like an app to fill the details of what this COVID thing. And then you have a receipt. This is when they ask you at the border that you submitted it online, and then your receipt should have your alive can. Should, your alive can receipt should have a letter of I V O A beside your name. So if your alive can have this I V O A 
in form i either data i either data v or data a so that means you are exempted for this test from the covid bureaucratic test let's keep going shall. so now let's talk about the um accepted vaccine the accepted vaccines accept the vaccines accepted by the government of canada for travel purpose to and within canada are astrazeneca uh, or covid shade i'm sure that's like the most popular one even in nigeria i think that's what you have so if you're not sure before you take your covid vaccine when you get to the center make sure you ask them that which one are they giving you check the list if it not enter go to another center but i still feel like this astra astrazeneca is the it's kind of very popular and i feel like that's what i think that's what you have in nigeria too i think please before you take your vaccine don't forget to check the expiry dates okay so we have astra snake i'll be typing on the screen though barat baotech jensen or johnson you know that jensen or johnson is just one jab or one just one dose that you need we have moderna novas piva clinical simple all the names i'll type it mm -hmm. So another thing, um, so what are the um things that you actually need um aside that the things you need is your proof of vaccination. Your proof of vaccination should be I don't know my phone is not moving. Your proof of vaccination. So what are the things that should be in your vaccine card? Don't make this mistake. There are a lot of things that should be in your vaccine card. First of all, and the most important, I'm coming. Let me rejuvenate. Okay, I'm coming. When you are shooting at like this, your hunger will just be coming from at home. That's time. You're not talking, talking. You have done your energy. So, what should be in your vaccine card, your COVID vaccine card, regardless of the country you're coming from? These are the things that should be in your COVID card. If it's not there, don't even bother going to the airport. Even if they allow you to go in your own country, your arrival destination. Do not allow you, especially if you are from all these high service countries like Nigeria. <laughs> is that one gang, 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 gang? you that they never wanted to enter their country before? Is that one gang, gang, they will used to hold you and say, Oh, yeah, and be going welcome. So, what I document that actually, what are the things that should actually be in your vaccine card? The first and most important thing is going to a certified government recognized testing center. Don't just go to any place and go and do um, your COVID. In every country, in Nigeria or whatever, just type COVID testing center in Nigeria. It will take you directly to Nigeria um, website. Uh, if you're in Ghana, just type COVID testing center in Ghana. It will take you directly to the your Ghana government website itself. You know your Ghana government. If you see, so Nigeria one is dot ng. Ghana on, I don't know their short link or anything. So just type it on Google. It just takes you there. When you just take it there, the thing will ask you for location of where you are and everything. So it will just show you the one that is closer to you. That's it for your name, your local government and everything. So make sure the one you're doing is under the list of approved centers by your own country. Because when you get to your country of departure, they will type it inside their system. Whichever testing center you have in your own country is internationally wide accepted. You understand? So just like Nigeria will submit their list of certified um testing um COVID giving vaccine center. Though at the end of the day it's like an international just like just like when you want to fill a form. If you're in UK, when you want to fill a form, right? And then the thing now asks you for country. You know that when you click country. You will see a lot of countries there. You see Nigeria, you see Ghana, you see whatever. Whereas you are filling your form inside UK. Uh -huh. Something like that. I don't know. There's a way they used to submit it. So when they type, when you're going to your country, when you arrive to Canada or any country you're going, so just check their system. If you co collected your vaccine form, in your forward will give hospital, they will type it there. If it is, the hospital is existing, no, but if it is not on their website, that means it is not certified by the government of your country so any vaccine you'll be taking make sure it's from the website dot ng of that your country's website hope you understand 
So the first and most important thing is going to a government approve. You want that is approved by your own country. Gun, 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 gun. Government approved COVID center. And I'm sure that we all know that the COVID thing is free, right? Government approved government center. So the next thing that should actually be on that COVID vaccine is your name. Not just, um, um, what is that name? Beautiful Slay. Uh, or Slay Queen or, or Mandarita Mama. Mm -mm. Your name as it is written on the international passport. You know they can still allow you to pass your own country. If you tell them that's your nickname. But once you pass your own country, just you are taking the next level because you don't have evidence to prove that's your nickname. So make sure your name and your surname as written in your international passport. Same thing. If they are saying like this, they should be saying same thing. So, the next thing that should actually be on your COVID vaccine card is the name of the vaccine. Like I told you, there are so many types of vaccine worldwide and so many countries, they have the one that they accept. Like Canada accepts uh, AstraZeneca or whatever. Different countries, they have the type that they accept or not. So, the name of the vaccine that you took, it should be there. And then the brand, it should be there. Name and brand should be the same thing, but maybe they can have subdivision. Maybe like we have this type of vaccine now. Um, for example, this um, this Nova this Nova Vax vaccine, we have NVX COV two seventy V comma AM then Nova Void Nova Void Nova Void and Cova Vax. So you will say the brand the brand that you collected is Nova Vax, whereas the name is Cova Vax. Or do you understand? Just write the brand and then the one in Panto that you took. So the next one is date of each of your dose. So if you are not taking Johnson and Jensen vas and COVID vaccine, you take it just one, one jab, one dose, and then that's all. You end up taking second this thing. But if you're taking anything aside that, any of that vaccine is always two dose, two jab. So each of your dates, when you took your first jab, it must be written inside your COVID this thing, the first date and the second day, every day, the second day, everything must be written inside your COVID vaccine card. Then the next one is certified language. Depending on the country you're going to, English, French, German, or whatever. But if your COVID vaccine is actually in English, or maybe you're going to, or if your COVID vaccine is in, um, is in the language of your native country, Maybe which country is they speak language like this? Let's say, for example, in Germany, you did your COVID test in Germany and then you're coming to Nigeria or you're going to Canada or anything. When you collect your COVID vaccine, you have to go and translate it. And translating it, you have to put the translator, it, it must be from a certified translator. And the translator has to put a stamp. Yes, to show that it is originally translated by this person that is actually satisfied. Don't just go and translate from any other person. So what I'm trying to say is, no matter where you are, just make sure that, just try as much as possible that your COVID vaccine should be in English. And it should, everything, the name, the card, the look, everything should actually be in English. So whether it's not in English or not, just try to convert them. Um, to translate it to the language of the country you're going and even when you translate it make sure you hold the original just in case they say this, your translator is lying they can always invite another translator they always have translator inside the airport they have so many people with so many languages they do just invite them to come and translate it for them and everything <clears throat> so if you have your vaccine card and you're actually like going to Canada, your vaccine card should be either in English or French. Yeah, they are the medium of speaking, or how would I say it? So it should either be in English or French. So English or French um, COVID vaccine card going to Canada is acceptable. But if it is something else, any other language aside from this, you have to translate it. And you have to translate it from a certified translator. And it has to have a stamp. Hope you understand that. So, having known this, make sure to keep both original 
if not if your if your covid vaccine is not translated and or if it does not have a stamp it will be considered as invalid so now after that is said what is the checklist of what you need to have like before you enter the border of canada so whether you are returning from canada or you want to return or to enter canada you have to have all these requirements whether you are flying whether you are driving whether you are sleeping whether as long as whatever you do we shall make it to pass through border you have to have this checklist so the first one is your arrived can receipt that i told you that you are actually uploading then another thing about this arrived can is you can only submit your application form 72 hours before your departure but you can always fill the form like you can feel let's say i'm traveling um let's say i'm traveling um which they can happen let's say i'm traveling april um, 15th of april right first of april i can just fill the form online on the website or on the app and just leave it there and just save it so by the time it's 12th of april midnight or 13th of april from 12th 12th 13th 14th 15th is all for this so from 13th of april 13th 14th 15th yeah depending on the time your flight is taking off depending on whatever 72 hours before your flight that is when you should not click submit on the app then print out the receipt you might not print it out just show them on your phone but you know that when you're traveling or when you're exiting your country most times you don't have wi-fi you don't have this so you can actually take a screenshot you can do print out anyone shall you can just show them at the airport or you can just do print out so make sure it's 72 hours don't submit it 72 hours before then another one is proof of vaccination that was uploaded to the arrive card when you took from your home country your vaccine card and then the evidence that you uploaded it then another one that should be on your list and that's why i'm saying that are you sure which type of rule is this is results of of your pre-entry test so they just change the change rule you still have to do your pcl and you, your pcl should be done in accredited centers as well and you already know the rule now 48 hours before departure so 72 hours before your departure you're filling your arrive can form whereas 48 hours before your departure you're actually getting your covid test done and i told you your 70 48 hours for covid test start immediately from when they take the specimen from your body so that's what i'm asking them that What's not the difference in this rule? But the difference is if you are not on, if you are not vaccinated, you actually be subjected to quarantine. But even at that, another checklist that you should have in you is having a quarantine plan. So after they brought out the law that from first of April 2022, they were allowed vaccinated um, traveler to skip the preentry test and everything. But then they are still telling me to do the PCR, and then they are still telling me. To still have a quarantine plan so what i'm trying to say is whether you have you're fully vaccinated and you've uploaded your document to the website or not they are saying they said it on their website that this does not exempt you from quarantinization and that is where i'm coming from see maybe the person that arrived now the person is a white or something they can allow the person to go but you know how they used to do it to nigerians especially africans nigerians or africans that's when the officer of Gansi, he, he, he just do him, me say, but somehow I feel like Canada is more accommodating to foreigners, but you know, some of them can be. Mm -hmm. So, this does not exempt you from quarantine. You can still quarantine for that for this, even when you have all, the all these documents. They can still tell you that until quarantine, we want you to quarantine. They can still tell you that that is what it is written in their website. And that is why I asked myself, what is the difference? But then, this is not tubular, but something that can make you quarantine is when you actually feel that your arrive can, when you upload your documents, you know that I told you that when you actually print out the receipt, in front of your name, you have either a A, either I, A, or V in front of your name. So, depending on whatever you feel on that app that can make you subjected to quarantinization, but even at that, they say it's still the norm. 
just like maybe if you arrive and then you start showing symptoms of this they can take you to quarantine and it might just be maybe they just feel like you want i just feel like you quarantine so one of your checklists to do to have is have a quarantine plan but having this quarantine plan you know what i'll tell you you know this quarantine plan eh? you stay 14 days or you take your test before and then you stay 14 days in the hotel and everything you can't stay with a family member when you're doing quarantine especially it has to be at an hotel i hope you know this okay so now for your quarantine plan let's say you are fully vaccinated you have all these requirements and then you are not sure whether they might ask you to quarantine or not just look for an hotel near your school near your work or any reason that is making you to go to canada shall look for an hotel there right book it and before you book ask the hotel management their refund policy is it refundable and everything? So make sure to go for 100% refundable hotel. 100% refundable hotel. So just in case, this one does not, just so if you do not end up saying you should quarantine, you just take your refund and everything. But if you know you stay in Canada, like you're just going back to Canada and you stay alone, and you stay alone, no need of having a quarantine plan. But if you know you don't stay alone, you stay with your family or anything, you have to book a hotel and hotel. You think. Do you guys understand? So, your checklist for travel that should be in your hands when you are entering Canada border is result of your PCR test 48 hours. Then the arrive can receives that you have vaccinated, that you've uploaded your results, and in the receipt, something should be in front of your name, either I or V or A, be in front of your name. I'll be showing you a picture. Then prove that your vaccination was uploaded to the arrive can original or photocopy. Then another one is having a quarantine plan. Like I told you, receipt of your hotel, everything. Then travel documents, of course, your international passport. And that is all for everything. So there are rules for unvaccinated um, travelers, but really, I actually advise everybody to take their vaccine. But I understand because. That was the thing, like maybe you do not plan to exit or to enter Canada and then you have like two months, like almost like one month, maybe you take the first job now and then two or three weeks after before you take the second job. But if you can get somebody that will give you Johnson and Johnson and everything. So I don't know. This is in the comment section. You guys anybody that actually need urgent help with if they are unvaccinated, but I feel like most people now before planning their travel to Canada, they would have been vaccinated or plan to vaccinate or this thing so if you know you have mind you have plans of traveling to canada whether canada or not it's good to actually take your vaccine don't be scared i'm taking my vaccine though i took the first job nothing happened to me i did not die i'm me talking to you people so make sure to go and take your vaccine whether you even have plans of traveling or not or maybe i'm still thinking just, just take it in case of this thing so that at least you'll be i know somebody one of my friends that was unable to travel is his work that was around December. His workplace, they were giving them free um, flight or free tour to Dubai. He could not qualify because he has not taken his COVID test. Even if you say, let him go and take the first job, the second job, he has to wait for two weeks. And for two weeks, that is when they are going to Dubai. So like me, now that I've not taken my second job, even if I get any opportunity now, it's just to just enter 15 hour bike, enter, I'm going to take my second dose. Oh yeah, we they go together. So even if you are not taking your second job now, at least take the first one. Even if I go and take it now, I can't go because that's been 14 days. We share different country with different requirements. Now that I've said that, I'm going to take the second job tomorrow. So you guys see, and I'm actually making a video. So I'm making a video on step by step how to fill your form on a live cam and everything. So fam, if you like and enjoy. So fam, like I said, I'm going to be showing you step by step method. Where's my app? Okay. So we are going to be doing it from the scratch. So we're just going to type arrive can So you're going to put in your valid email if you have an account with them but i'm sure you don't have an account with them that's why you're watching this video but maybe you've actually tried it you have an account or not anyone just do you share so i'm going to be like creating an account 
of course the policy thing that we all don't used to read so i'll put my email address Then put the password. Continue. So I have to go to my email for the verification code. So this is how the verification code actually looks like. So I just copy and then paste. So, so this tool is actually used to facilitate the collection of information needed to administer and enforce legislation to help contain COVID-19 and keep Canadians safe and healthy. You will only need to fill out fill this out once per household so skip so depending on who you are traveling with if you're doing going alone you're going with dependent or this thing so let's add a traveler add your travel document and vaccine information to make future submission quicker so you can edit delete and add additional travelers at any time once you have successfully registered a traveler we need to complete your arrive can so what is it is that there is that Maybe for the first time you are traveling, you are traveling with your your whole family member. So you can actually like add the old people you are traveling with at once. Of course, your family members not only. So maybe you are coming back to Canada, then you are going back again, but you are the only one traveling. You can try to add them, remove them, whatever. You can just edit it to any distance that you want. So you can be the only one traveling for now. Then maybe when you are coming back, or maybe you are traveling again, you're traveling with your dependent, you need so what i think you need you need your travel document register a travel document e.g passport nexus card permanent residence and etc so if you know you are you are in you're already in canada before you already have your peer you can use that one but of course if you are going for firstly from the first time of course you have to use your international passport so the next document you need to use is proof of vaccination like i explained um in my video proof of vaccination then you have to like start your arrive camp form Submit your travel and quarantine information and apply and arrive can if it situates your entry to Canada. So can you see all the steps? So you click continue next. So you have to scan the documents you're using to um arrive Canada. So the documents allowed they allow um jpg pgn pdf and all those required documents. So just take a good picture with your phone, just put it under good lighting during the day just take perfect picture finish well it has to scan face what to do now oh it has to somehow scan your so i'll just click enter manually so you put your passport your your document there country of issue nigeria document number that's your passport number ao5 let me just put one number there the surname ashi then you know my names tell me date of birth let's just put um zero six zero six oh sorry zero is from here don't mind me yeah let's just put 1998 zero six zero six so the all these all these questions that actually is to confuse somebody so will you provide proof that you are fully vaccinated against covid yes so answer each of the questions to provide proof of vaccination which covid vaccine did you receive for your first dose so guys um normally i'll be 
joining this video with another video and i'll actually be uploading this video as well separately so just in case some people understand the process the document requirement so they can just go to this one directly and everything you understand so i'll be uploading this one i'll be attaching this particular excuse me i'll be attaching this particular video to a video and in that video i explain step by step the latest canada um covid rules and everything so i'll be attaching to it but if you are watching this video as a single handed like you're watching it without any how to uh, without any documents required and uh, the latest canada and everything make sure you click the link in my description box i have a playlist for canada so just click it and check canada covid rules or just plus canada covid will actually them or anything so i don't know which one i shall know that i'll be joining it, this one with another video and i don't know which one you'll be watching so i have list of um verified um covid vaccine you have to take so let's just take as astra vacant because that's like the most common one so in which country did you receive your first dose of covid vaccine so i took my nigeria depending on where you took there so they said travelers who received their covid vaccine at canadian ab embassy abroad to select canada so maybe you, you're already in canada already and you took one covid vaccine of course you know where you took it now so date of your covid vaccine let me just pick when did I take them one step. So let me just pick first of January. And that is because of what I explained in that video that your second job must be less than um less than 14 must be more than 14 days before traveling. Go and watch the video, or less if you know the process already. So have you received a second job of COVID vaccine? Yes. Which COVID vaccine did you receive your second dose? You know, I told you you can take anyone. In which country did you receive it? So, you could receive your first one in Dubai, the second one in Nigeria, anyone, sha. Then just put the second dose. Let me just pick. It has to be like three months different. Let me book first. Mm. So, next. Upload proof of vaccina vaccination. Upload a file photo. So, this is their required... um this thing jpn jpg pdf or use your phone camera to take a photo of your vaccine receipt important note on pdf upload please ensure your uploaded file is not password protected so probably it's even better to just take it directly from your phone so avoid this thing you can upload one image containing proof of two vaccine codes or two images each containing a separate vaccine and those so this is for people that did not take their vaccine um jab in the same place maybe you took your first jab in nigeria you collect that vaccine then maybe you took the second one in another country but then it's actually very rare for anybody to give you a second dose of vaccine without asking for a proof of the first one but maybe if you show the proof they might not want to write it with the same if it's not the same insurance company or anything so anyone sure you can just snap two pictures either you have all your covid vaccine dose in one vaccine card or you have it in two vaccine cards anyone bring a paper or electronic copy of your proof of vaccination when you travel and retain it throughout your quarantine period yo can you see what i was saying that's it talking to those quarantine period your vaccination status will be confirmed at the border by a canadian border services the proof of vaccination must be in english french or a certified translation if the proof of vaccination is not in English or French, upload this certified translation and bring the official document when you travel. The way I try to tell you is whatever you are uploading, make sure you hold your original and always put it in your hand luggage. I have a video on my page differentiating between hand luggage and carry on luggage and things that should be inside and that your vaccination card might actually be in English. I said too many things in that my video. You might want to go check it out, the details and every other thing. So we've talked about all this explanation already so i'm just going to add a um, photo so either you take camera let me just snap something but of course you have to make sure that it's clear enough let's just use something so either you assess your gallery or you take this one so you might as well just take pictures of these things before you start I just hope it works too. Yeah. 
Here's him. You have confirmed that the travel document and proof of vaccination belong to you and have not been tampered with. If you frequently travel with others, you can add additional traveler now. If you are traveling solo, select next button. So this one is for people that are traveling with their spouse, their children or whatever. So if you are um, going with any other person, you just click add button. So that add button, you do the same thing and everything. Depending on the number of this, thing, just same process that we did. Don't do mistake and... Don't do mistake and snap your vaccine card for your husband or somebody else vaccine. Let everything be tied. And of course, you can always check your um this thing. What is it called? Your details before some final submission. So next, great. You are all set. Would you like to start your arrive um arrive can form now? All travelers entering Canada are required to submit their travel and quarantine information and obtain and arrive can e received prior to entry so start your arrive can now you know as i told you guys you can always fill this form anytime but you have to submit it only 72 hours prior to departure nothing less than that so we're just going to like start it but we are not submitting now start so it's all this question i confuse somebody so what best describes you or your primary reason for entry Canada. So if you are including other people in your submission, all travelers must have the same reason for entry Canada. If you're a Canadian citizen or have rights of entry and you're traveling for exams, share this for work organization. Mm -hmm. So why are you coming? So let's just speak to study because I know that's the most common one. Are you entry Canada? No, I want to fly, I want to fly with my wings in my hair. All travelers be noticed. On arrival to Canada, you may be required to take <coughs> A COVID test. You are asked to register in advance for your COVID test. Registration will speed up your testing experience. Can you see what I'm saying? That they scrap this COVID rule, and I still do not really see this thing. So it's travelers selected for testing must complete their arrival test as soon as possible. Fairly any other instruction provided. More information on the arrival test is available at blah blah blah. Next. Enter the details of your client arrival to Canada within the next 72 hours, three days. If your trip is not within the next 72 hours, come back and complete your submission letter. Later. You guys know that was what I said. So you can fill your form anytime, but once it's like three days prior to you traveling, that is when you click the submit. So country of original departure. This is the last country you stayed in or visited prior to this. So Nigeria, arrival airports. Uh, which one should we pick? I don't know, really know your put in this thing. I want to pick one in Toronto. Airline. I bet which airline they go now. Which airline flies from Nigeria, guys? I don't know. Let's just say Canada. So, flight number. Let's just put any number. So, your flight number will actually be in your ticket, of course. Date of arrival. So, you know, I told you guys, it has to be like TV days prior to your traveling. So, let's pick. Which what did I pick? Okay. Let's pick 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. So, you make sure to check your time of flight. Date of arrival. That's, you know that if you are going on a long distance, you can depart from Nigeria 4 p.m. Then you get to canada the next day maybe uh, 5 a.m so check your ticket and look at it date of arrival is different from date of departure date of arrival you can book you can even where you're coming from can take you three days but just check the date that is within your flight that you get to canada go, go, go. so if your flight is actually telling you you actually get to canada tv days um 22nd let's just say 22nd of march and then the exact time you can see you can always edit your time and everything but then let's just use this one i'm sure you know how to use the time if you see anything 22 like this so anything less than you will see they'll write it exactly 22 tv 5 or this exactly mm -hmm. so let's just say 21 so can you see that this date is blow i can't click it that's because i have to fill it only three days before my departure date can you see how this one is but that means if i'm traveling 20 tv i cannot feel 
lead up to here. Do you guys understand what I'm trying to say? So it's only three days prior to my departure that I can. But you can just upload your document there. So next contact please provide your primary telephone number where you'll be contacted where you reach um Canada. Hey I be waiting for Canada postal code. Let me just put. I don't know who's person number be this one. <laughs> so what's your official language? English, of course. Is the number too much? Who's? <sighs> I've been waiting in Canada this thing. Canada phone code. This number I'm going to copy now to be long. <sighs> so let me just use this one. This one. This one TV. Five, five, five. Seven, one, two, three. Next. select travelers for this trip you may edit existing traveler details and or add another traveler so people traveling together with the same purpose of travel and who plan to be at the same location for full duration of their quarantine period can be listed below up to eight travelers and can enter canada together using the same arrive can receive exceptions will be confirmed at entry so if you have anybody traveling with you i think maybe your friend or this you can do up to eight people I'm the only one that is traveling. So, next. Please read. Be aware that the following requirements may apply to you. Some exemptions exist. Travel requirements can change with very short notice. For information such as boarding requirements, visits, entry requirements, checklist. So, it's more like they've never updated this travel. Canada. So, guys, make sure to go watch the video to see how I explained everything, Sha. COVID testing requirement. If individuals five years of age or older must provide proof of COVID test results before boarding a flight to Canada with limited exception. This applies to all travelers regardless of vaccination status. You guys know that I explained it in that video that they just crap this vaccination thing that is still the same thing. So it's only people that are less than five years so that is exempted. Any of the following test results are valid to enter Canada. Negative rapid test negative molecular type pcr pcr is a common one everything so if you have proof you may be subject to a fine or denied body or entry to canada <laughs> so your best bet is doing your pcr there so quarantine requirement all travelers must have a suitable quarantine plan for 14 days starting on the day they enter canada i explained in that video so if you've not seen that video make sure to go and watch it to understand very well so this video will not just be too long you must keep proof of your COVID vaccine for 14 days after entry Canada. I acknowledge that I or the travelers listed in this submission will not be allowed to board the flight to Canada if I or we cannot show proof of a valid COVID test. I understand. Have you tested COVID positive for COVID in the last 10 to 18 days? So, if you've tested or not, no. Do you have proof of a valid negative test result? You know, I said to you that you need to. You need to show proof of your valid test. If you don't bring food or valid COVID test, you may be subject to a fine of. Okay, are you guys saying that five thousand? So do you have proof of a valid negative COVID test result? Yes. Which country did you receive your negative COVID test from? Nigeria. Just put your country. As a traveler coming to Canada, you need to declare all countries that you have visited. 14 days before your entry. In the last 14 days, did you or anyone traveling with you visit any other country besides Nigeria? No. You can answer yes. So let's 
complete your quarantine plan questionnaire. Of travelers, even those who provide proof of qualifying vaccinations or COVID or positive COVID tests must show that they have a suitable quarantine plan in the event that their quarantine exemption is not approved by the Canada Border Service. So that's what I'm telling you. Whether you are fully vaccinated, unvaccinated, or whatever, just hold you. Or a PCR, have your vaccine card. Guys, make sure to go and watch that video. I made an explicit explanation there. Do you have accommodation where you can quarantine for 40 days or possibly longer? Yes, I explained this in that video and how you can get your refund. Can you avoid all contact with other people in the household with whom you did not travel and have no guests with? Yes. Wait, let me explain this one to you guys. Can you avoid all contact with other people in the household with whom you did not travel and have no guests? So that's what I explained in that video. When they talk about quarantinization, you have to quarantine alone unless you travel with, as much you travel with your family. When you reach Canada, all of you have to quarantine the same place. As much you travel with your friend or someone, all of you have to quarantine in the same room. But if you travel alone, you have to quarantine alone. You cannot go and quarantine and go and stay with your brother or your sister's house or anything. So that's what they're asking. Can you avoid all contact with other people in the household with whom you do not travel with and guest? Yes. Will you have access to the necessities of life, including water, food, medication, and eat without leaving quarantine? So that's them as we are showing that anywhere you choose to quarantine, they have all these things. And that's why I told you your best bet is actually like booking an hotel. But if you know you've been in Canada before, of course, you can stay in your apartment. But whatever you are doing, that means in that 14 days, you are not allowed to leave that premises you'll be there. So will you have access to necessities of life, including water? Yes. Are there at risk people at the location where you plan to quarantine? So, are these people there? 65 years, have an underlying con, have a component? No, are there at risk people at the location? No. Is there a person at the location where you plan to quarantine who works or assists in a facility, home, or workplace that includes at risk population? No. Let me explain this one. Is there a person at the location? Where you plan to quarantine, who works or assists in a facility, home, or workplace that includes at risk population. So, this includes nurses, doctors, healthcare professionals, first responders, all those things. So, they are trying to say that if you actually want to quarantine, are you going to quarantine in a hospital or near an hospital or a care home? That means you are doing yourself that there's no difference in the quarantinization. But of course, no, because I feel like your best quarantinization place should be like an hotel. Is your place of quarantine a group living environment, e.g. group home or senior residence, or does it currently house different families? No. So what they are trying to know is, you they, they just want to be sure that you are doing single quarantine. Is your place of quarantine a group living environment, e.g. group home, senior resident, or does it currently house different families? A group living environment is a setting where you cannot separate yourself from others. This may include a home, group, or co-living setting, such as, you know, I explained it earlier. You see, these ones, they are just trying to use English. They want to just whine you. Everything still boils down to, are you quarantining alone, or you have to quarantine and stay with somebody? So, it may include a shelter, group, home, group, residence, hostels, industrial, construction. So, that means even if you're a student, whatever, you cannot quarantine in your student hostel, unless you actually stay alone. It has to be like a secluded area, student residence, or less uh, small apartment where you share with others. So you have to quarantine alone. That's the purpose. No. Next. What is the full address of the place you, the traveler, is in this submission plan to quarantine? This is the place that you will go to complete your quarantine. So as I told you, hotel or rental space is just like a best place. So. Uh, which one are we going to pick now? Let's search for. Oh God, I don't browse tire. There's no taxi here now. So I just pick one. Thirty-two 
So City Toronto postal code. She so just picks it automatically. So next. So last step, complete this COVID safe assessment. Are you or any of the travelers listed on this form experiencing any of the following symptoms such as fever, cough, fever, this thing? No. Thank you for filling out your travel information. I acknowledge that the information provided in my form is true to the best of my knowledge. I understand that providing false or misleading information can result in enforcement actions such as ticket fines and or imprisonment. If you are satisfied with your entry, click submit to finish. So make sure before you finish, make sure to click edit, go through all your everything that you've picked like that. But then to purchase to waste time. Continue. So check all your details like is the same, no mistake. Wait, which one that pictures? Okay, proof of negative this thing. So, make sure to check everything. That's it. Then you click submit. So, once you submit, it's going to print out um, a receipt for you. And everything so make sure to watch my video on step by step the checklist and everything it will actually give you the list of everything that you actually need to submit with this document so guys i hope with this video of mine i've been able to help somebody how to actually feel that arrive.com so even if you're not ready to submit you can just save and close you can log in anytime you like so guys if you like this video make sure you click the subscribe button subscribe to my youtube channel and i'll see you in my next video thanks for watching and bye